Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I am back out here uh, several thousand seconds away from Titan. What I've found out in the last few days after posting my other videos is that I can actually use the atmosphere of Titan to eliminate all my velocity. So I don't actually need to use any main fuel to get into orbit around Titan. That's a good thing because at this point, you know, I don't have tons and tons of fuel. Now I've tried several different things and I'm kind of a little bit torn on what's ideal because it, at least in the experience that I've had in the last few days, yes, you can eliminate all the velocity, but you do so at great peril or nearly rotation, nearly great peril. So I'll show you what I mean, at least I'll try, and then maybe we'll consider some different ideas for what might be a little bit better. <coughs> and a lot of this is just trial and error on my part. You know, again, these are learn with me videos. I'm certainly not saying that this is the right way to do it by any means. But for starters, let's kind of get oriented so that we're prograde. That's good enough. And let me bring up orbit MFD and reference Titan. So I can see here that my periapsis is 67 kilometers. And near as I can tell, with the type of velocity that we're going to have, there's no way to survive re-entry, or there's no way to survive atmospheric braking if you're any less than about 136 kilometers, somewhere close to that number. You know, if you get down to 130, then I haven't tried every single possible AOA setting, so I don't know for sure, but somewhere around 136 kilometers seems to be where you have to be to survive. And you're barely surviving. I mean, the vessel is almost overheating. So one idea that I've got is to go retrograde and bleed off maybe a thousand meters per second or something like that. That wouldn't use, you know, it would use a little bit of fuel, but you'd still have a lot left. And then that would allow you to have a more, you know, delicate atmospheric ride. And the other thing is G-force. When you look at uh, aero brake, you can see the G-meter, you know, is, it's, it's getting up there. So in terms of human spaceflight, you know, you have to take that into account. So let's just see what we can do here. Translation. And we're going to translate our PEA so that it's close to that 135, 136, somewhere in there. And there was also a bit of discussion in one of the parts, I think it was part 5, where you can use aero break even out here hang on one moment even out here at this distance to help you start setting up you know your air uh, your atmospheric braking uh, you do have to select reference and type in the body because we're too far away at this point for it to be auto referenced um, this can be helpful, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure how to read it to get exactly what I need. Because rotation. You know, if we start rotating to get an AOA of like 
50 or 60. You know, it doesn't show us closing in around Titan. And obviously it doesn't, you know, tell us yet, you know, what our G-force would be, so... So to the extent that this is useful, I'm not real sure until we get closer in. Once we get closer in, it's useful. So let's close our distance a little bit. We've got our PEA close to what it's going to have to be. And we're still quite a ways out, so let's warp time in. Okay, we're getting reasonably close. Getting a little further, right about there. And let's go ahead and close up retro doors and radiator. Finally. Okay, so here we're going to have a PEA of 139. I'm worried that that might be a little high because the range for getting yourself captured and and getting a you know an orbit established is pretty narrow, at least based on the little bit of experimenting I've done. And we're going to get very hot. Uh, it's it. In my experimenting, we're going to redline AP the vessel. But here again, even as close in as we are to Titan at this point, I'm questioning how to read Arrow Break MFD for useful information, because again, it's not showing that we're going to close in the orbit yet. It will show that here in a little bit, but it's not showing it now. And, you know, the G meter here is... It's increasing, decreasing. So in terms of using this as an indicator for when you're going to burn up... I don't know. Anyway, we're getting pretty close here. We're about 325 kilometers, and we're now getting a little bit of atmospheric drag. I can hear it. You can see we're heating up. And there's quite a few different ways you can do atmospheric braking, obviously. You don't have to necessarily get the entire uh, orbit established on your first pass. If you go back to one of my videos from earlier this year, where I did atmospheric braking at Mars, you can see that you can do multiple passes to get the orbit completely established. But if possible, we would like to do it in one pass. So here we are, we're heating up now. Unfortunately, I can't bring up the temperature display on an external MFD, or I would. So we have to be in this view to see the temperature display. And we're still 40 Not seconds away 26. from our lowest point. Mock 25. Mock 24. Warning, hull temperature. Yeah, it looks like I'm a little Mach too low. 
I don't think I'm going to survive this one. Mock 22. Warning, hull temperature. Mock 21. Yep, no, we're going to survive. We're cooling off. Hull temperature. Mock 20. It's close. Mock 19. Mock 18. It's a cool view of Saturn in the background. Seventeen. As you can see, we've lost uh, close to 4,000 meters per second 16. already. Now our orbit's starting to bend in here, according to Aerobrick MFD. 15. We're almost at periapsis. Mach 14. Mach so you, that's 13. one approach you can use. It's not an approach I would like, though. Um, it's just... I mean, if you think about it in terms of human spaceflight, or even if you're sending a probe, you're not going to want to get to the point where you're just a few degrees away from incinerating. I mean, that's not... that's not realistic. But once we're at this point, we can basically start watching our eccentricity. And when it drops below one, then we can start thinking about pitching down a little bit. Mock 9. And if we wanted, uh, before we got to this point, we could have increased our AOA a bit more to flatten the vessel out a little bit to get a little more get a little more of the vessel facing the atmosphere more surface area I don't know that it would do any good to do that now but as we can find out yeah we're almost below one there we are now so we're captured and you can see our APA coming way down. So if we wanted to plan on going around, which we do want to do because we're not lined up with the base, then once the APA gets a little lower, we're going to want to zero out and then Mach basically seven. climb back up a little bit so we can get into an orbit. Or if we wanted to, we could even do that now and then just plan on going around a few times. But I don't see any benefit in doing that. We would want to we want to lower our APA as much as possible while we're still here, you know, in, in deep enough in the atmosphere to get some to get some additional drag. You can see it's coming down nicely. Here in a moment, I'm going to exit out and come back in and try just one other method. But I just want to see what kind of orbit we can establish here first. And so far, this was all done without using any main fuel. Getting pretty good there. Start lowering our AOA. Okay, so that's basically the idea. Now we've got an APA of about four, 560 kilometers, so we would come around to this, this point. And if we aren't in a good position to get lined up with the base, then we would probably need to raise our PEA a little bit, so it would require a little bit of a burn there. Uh, but depending on where the base is at, we might be able to come up to Apoapsis and then just plan on you know, landing right over here somewhere. 
without ever having to do any kind of circularization or anything like that. But you get the idea. It's go ahead and turn this off for now. Center of gravity shift offline. It is uh, possible to eliminate, you know, all that velocity uh, without having to do any kind of burn. Not real safe, but you can do it. All right, let's go back into that scenario. And one other thought that I had. Um, I haven't actually tried this yet. But one other thought that I had. If we reference Titan. Copy that information over to the HUD. Rotation. And then we find out basically what our, uh, you know, what some kind of ideal approach velocity would be, because what we just had, you know, somewhere a little over 9,000, I don't think that's ideal, it's a little much. So we could say, well, let's bleed off a thousand meters a second, that's not going to use a tremendous amount of fuel, and it'll make for a much safer approach there into Titan, in theory. So simply retrograde main engine burn till we see this down to about 7800. Oh. And oops. Rotation. And actually as part of this burn, if I do a bit of rotation, yeah, I can raise my PEA while doing this retrograde burn so that I don't have to do two separate burns. Okay, we'll go with that. That brings our that blood off about a thousand meters per second. So now we'll go back to prograde, facing Titan. And you can see we really didn't use a ton of fuel there, about five percent, I believe. just set this up again. Let's get in a little closer before we adjust the PEA. Well, actually, let's not get in closer. Translation. Because the farther out we are, the less fuel we use. Let's go down to 134 this time because we are slower. Okay. And again, you know, arrow brake MFD can help us a little bit. Rotation. But for me, what seems to be working the best here is just a bit of trial and error. Okay, now let's warp time in again.
Okay, getting really close. Turn on the APU. Retro radiator. A-way. Now we can just compare this approach to the other one and see if bleeding off a thousand meters per second uh, was enough. Was it worth it? Was it worth the fuel? I, I would say yes. And it might even be worth it to bleed off 2,000 meters a second. Let's just kind of see what our... Let's let our temperature display be our judge on that one. So let's go ahead and warp time in a little bit more. APU fuel 80%. Somewhere around 320 or so, I start hearing the atmosphere in my headset. Yeah, there it is. And I don't know that um, 50 degrees AOA, I don't know that that's necessarily ideal. 45 might be better. 65 might be better. The, uh, the G-force here would be, I assume, what would dictate what you wanted your AOA to be. You know, you want to have an, a G-force that's reasonable. And if you look here at our secondary HUD, we can see what our G is right now. Now we're at 1G. So here we are again. Mock 23. Let's see where our temperature ends up at this hottest point. Mock 22. Yeah, to me this seems much more reasonable. I mean, we're, we're slowing down uh, significantly, so we're going to start cooling off here in a moment. And we peaked here, you know, without ever getting into the yellow. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I were inside this vessel, I would be much more comfortable with this flight. Even though we did use a little bit of fuel to do it. And I didn't pay attention to what the G was. Uh, previously, but here I think it was actually I didn't catch what the maximum was here either. Mock fourteen. And if we wanted to, we could do this even safer, obviously, by you know bleeding off fifteen hundred meters a second instead of a thousand or two thousand meters a second, whatever. But this looks reasonable to me. You know. Well. Depending on the G-force, that might have been a bit high. So maybe maybe bleeding off another 500 or 1,000 might be worth Mock it. 11. Just to bring the G uh, max down. But as in terms of temperature, this seems perfectly reasonable to me. So now we're at periapsis. And we still got a little ways to go to close the to close the orbit. And what we might be able to do this time, since last time I ended up with a negative periapsis, maybe if I start lowering the AOA now. Because I'm still going to get captured, no doubt about that. Mock 8.
Okay, we're captured. Now the PEA is starting to drop, so maybe... Maybe lowering the AOA will help us out there, so... So we won't have as much circularization to do. Although this may not be worth it, because if we end up with a really high apoapsis, then... You know, it may be better to have an APA at 500 kilometers and then have a small amount of circularization to do to bring up the PEA rather than going way out, you know, that, but there, you know, at this point, that's all kind of personal taste and depending on how you want to do your mission. Yeah, we're still losing, we're still ending up with a very, with a relatively low PEA anyway, so. I guess it didn't really do us a lot of good. And our apoapsis is going to be out there quite a ways. So I guess we probably should have just left the, eight, the angle of attack where it was. But uh, any, at any rate, that's a second idea for for doing this. Um, I can't really think of a third, a third way to try this without just being totally redundant. So let me turn off the APU. Warning, center of gravity shift offline. And that's going to be fine. So I'm gonna, going to go ahead and end this video here. Um, I just wanted to come back and show an idea for using the atmosphere of Titan as a break so that we wouldn't have to use very much fuel. You know, you got a couple different ways to do it there. You can either be a little bit dangerous with it and use no fuel or you can use a little bit of fuel and have a much safer approach. For me, I would rather I would rather take the second approach there and come in not having to worry so much about possibly overheating. So that's going to be it. I'm going to wrap it up. If you liked the video, leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time. Translation. And we're going to translate our PEA so that it's close to that 135, 136, somewhere in there. And there was also a bit of discussion in one of the parts, I think it was part five, where you can use arrow brake even out here. Hang on one moment. Even out here at this distance to help you start setting up, you know, your air, uh, your atmospheric braking. Uh, you do have to select reference and type in the body because we're too far away at this point for it to be auto-referenced. You have to be to survive. And you're barely surviving. I mean, the vessel is almost overheating. So one idea that I've got is to go retrograde and bleed off maybe a thousand meters per second or something like that. That wouldn't use, you know, it would use a little bit of fuel, but you'd still have a lot left. And then that would allow you to have a more you know, delicate atmospheric ride. And the other thing is G-force. When you look at uh, aero brake, you can see the G-meter, you know, it's, it's, it's getting up there. So in terms of human space flight, you know, you have to take that into account. So let's just see what we can do here. That's good enough. And let me bring up Orbit MFD and Reference Titan. So I can see here that my periapsis is 67 kilometers. And near as I can tell, with the type of velocity that we're going to have, there's no way to survive re-entry, or there's no way to survive atmospheric braking if you're any less than about 136 kilometers, somewhere close to that number. You know, if you get down to 130, then I haven't tried every single possible 
AOA settings, so I don't know for sure, but somewhere around 136 kilometers seems to be where you Hey, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I am back out here uh, several thousand seconds away from Titan. What I've found out in the last few days after posting my other videos is that I can actually use the atmosphere of Titan to eliminate all my velocity so I don't actually need to use any main fuel to get into orbit around Titan. That's a good thing because at this point you know I don't have tons and tons of fuel. Now I've tried several different things and I'm kind of a little bit torn on what's ideal because it, at least in the experience that I've had in the last few days, yes, you can eliminate all the velocity, but you do so at great peril, or nearly, rotation, nearly great peril. So I'll show you what I mean, at least I'll try, and then maybe we'll consider some different ideas for what might be a little bit better. <coughs> and a lot of this is just trial and error on my part. You know, again, these are learn with me videos. I'm certainly not saying that this is the right way to do it by any means. But for starters, let's kind of get oriented so that we're programmed. 